So in the previous section, in section 1.3, we were assuming always that we knew the data exactly. We had completely precise data. And so when we wanted to calculate some of our summary statistics, we could just calculate our data exactly. However, in real life, it's quite often the case that we don't exactly calculate all our data, but we just get rough data. For example, uh, let's suppose we're trying to find out what people's journey times to get from home to campus is. What probably doesn't happen is you probably don't walk up to someone and say, what's your journey time to campus? And they say, uh, it's eight minutes and 13 and a half seconds. And then you write down eight minutes, 13 and a half seconds. And you ask someone else and they say, oh, I'm seven minutes and 47 seconds. What's more likely to happen is like you just have a set of tick boxes. For example, you could say, uh, does it take you zero to five minutes or five to 10 minutes, or 10 to 15 or 15 to 30, that sort of thing. So there you're not finding out exactly how long each journey takes, but you're finding which one of these categories, we, we sometimes call them bins, which bin does this data fit into? Is it in the naught to five minutes bin? Is it in the five to 10 minutes bin? And so we have this binned data. And that's what we're looking at in this section. So here I've, uh, I haven't actually collected this data, I've made it up. Uh, but this is data for uh, the journey problem. And you can see that we've got these bins starting with 0 to 5 minutes, 5 to 10, 10 to 15, etc. in the first column. And then we've got this column labeled frequency. So when I say frequency, I mean literally uh, how many people were in this bin. So this means that four people answered, uh, my journey takes not five minutes, and eight people answered, my journey takes five to 10 minutes. So that's the frequency column. And you can see here, I pretended to ask 100 people. Now, there's something related to the relative frequency that's also convenient to know. And we call that relative frequency. Relative frequency. And the relative frequency is uh, what proportion of people answered that way. So the frequency is four people out of here, 100. So the relative frequency is four one hundredths or 0 0.04. And you, know, you can probably tell the reason that I made this be 100 people is that I, I could calculate the frequencies in my head. But the relative frequency is frequency, the number of people in the bin, divided by n, the number of pieces of data. Yeah, so similarly, 0 0.8, 0 0.21, 0 0.42, and so on. And so sometimes that's a more convenient thing to deal with. In particular, it's convenient if we want to find the median of this data. So if we lined up all the journey lengths from smallest to largest, uh, whose journey is in the middle. And so the thing is here, because we don't have the exact data on how long each journey was, we can't tell you exactly what uh, the median journey length is, but we can tell you which bin it falls into. Right, so if we look down relative frequency, when we get to 0 0.5, half the data, we've reached the median bin so if you look at these, you ought to be able to convince yourself that the first three bins together is uh, less than 0.5, right? It's 0.33, I think. But then when we include this fourth bin, the 15 to 30 minutes bin, uh, then we're greater than 0.5. So that means the median is in this fourth bin. So we can't say exactly uh, is in this fourth bin. So we can't say exactly what the median value of journey time is, but we can say it's between 15 and 30 minutes, and that 15 to 30 is the median bin. Uh, so that's why the relative frequency was useful, because it helped us find this median. What about the mode? Well, if we literally look at this frequency table, we can see that the one that has uh, 
the, mo the largest frequency, as in the bin with the most people in it, is this one, the 42. Right, so you might want to say that that's the mode. But on the other hand, these bins that I've got here aren't all the same size. If we look at these first three bins, they last five minutes. These next bins last 15 minutes. And this last bin lasts 60 minutes. So somehow it doesn't seem fair that some bins are bound to get more people in because they're bigger bins. So it seems really that if we want to look at this, uh, what we ought to do uh, is look at kind of the density of frequency in the bin. That is, uh, what's the number of people in the bin divided by the side, size of the bin? Because that's kind of telling us how much frequency we're kind of packing into the bin. So that's what we call the uh, relative frequency density or just the frequency density. Frequency density is relative frequency divided by size of the bin. And so that's to try and equal things up between the big bins and the little bins to make things fairer. Uh, so we can make that a, a column in our table as well. We can make a frequency density table. Frequency density. And so the first one is going to be uh, 0 0.04, the relative frequency, divided by five minutes. So 0 .0, uh, 0 0.04 times 5 0.008. Similarly, the next one is 0 0.08 in the bin, divided by five, the number of minutes in the bin. 0 0.042. Now, the next bin is 0 0.42, relative frequency, divided by 15 because there are 15 uh, minutes in that bin. So we're going to divide that by more and so on. You can fill the table in or uh, see the details uh, in the notes. So now we see that it's this bin, the third bin, that has the highest frequency density. Highest frequency density. So that's where kind of the, the most people are being packed in per unit minute, if you like. And so really it makes more sense to call that the mode. So even though it's not the bin with the most people in it, it's the bin with the biggest frequency density. Uh, finally, we might also want to calculate the mean. But again, we can't calculate the mean exactly because we don't have the exact details of what the journey lengths are. But if we want to kind of get close to the mean, get a pretty good guess at the mean uh, journey length, what we can do is assume that all the data is at the midpoint of the bin. By that I mean, in this 0 to 5 minutes bin, let's assume that all of those were exactly 2.5 minutes. And in this 5 to 10 minute, minute bin, let's assume all of them were 7.5 minutes. And similarly, this 60 to 20 minute bin, let's assume they're all 90 minutes. Now, obviously, that's not really true, or at least it's highly unlikely to be true. But we can get a good guess at the mean if we assume everything in the bin was at the midpoint. So if we wanted to calculate the mean that way, as always, it would be 1 over 100, because we have 100 pieces of data. And then we have four measurements that we're pretending are exactly 2.5 minutes. So it's 4 times 2.5 plus. And then we have eight people that we're pretending are exactly 7.5 minutes. So we do 8 times 7.5, and so on, up to the two people which we're assuming pretending are exactly 90 minutes. And uh, if we work that all out, it comes up as 24.4 minutes. About 25 minutes is roughly the mean journey length. Obviously, that's probably not the exact mean because we've made some assumptions. But, you know, it's probably fair enough. Uh, so just to be precise, what we've done there is we've let the mean x bar be 1 over n. Then we've summed over bins j, where 
fj uh, is the frequency of bin j and mj is its midpoint. So j is labeling the bins, n is the number of data points, fj is the frequency of bin j, the number of people in that bin, and mj is the midpoint of the bin where we're pretending, assuming that everyone is. Uh, similarly, you can find a, a binned variance the same way by taking uh, the formula for the variance, but then again, assuming that every data point is exactly on the midpoint of the bin, which isn't literally true. So there's uh, a convenient way to illustrate uh, binned data, uh, and that's using something that you've perhaps heard of called a histogram. So what a histogram is, along the x-axis, we put the values, and then we do a, a bar, a kind of box for each bin, where its height is the uh, frequency density, uh, sorry, the, the relative uh, frequency density. Uh, so uh, we can see that, I think, down here. Here's our journey length. And you can see that on the left-hand side, we have the small bins, the five minutes bins, the 0 to 5, the 5 to 10, uh, the 10 to 15, then we have these three 15 minute long bins, and then we have this very long uh, one hour bin at the side. And what we've plotted there, this density there, by which I mean the frequency density. So you might remember that this fourth bin had more people in it than the third bin, uh, but because they were spread out in a bigger area, that's why we've plotted the density. You can kind of think of the areas of this box, these boxes representing the frequency. Now, when the bins are different sizes, it's very important uh, to use the density for that reason. When bins are different sizes, you need to use the density to make it fair because some of them are fatter than others. If the bins are actually all the same size, then frequency and relative frequency and frequency density are all proportional. So if the bins are the same size, it doesn't really matter which one you use. But when the bins are different sizes, it's important to use the frequency density to allow for the different bin sizes. Uh, just finally, in this section, we've been talking about binned data, where the data kind of arrives to us pre-binned because it's being collected in bins. Uh, but sometimes, even if you've got data that you know exactly, you might still want to make a histogram of it, just because a histogram you know, seems it's a nice way of like showing what the data looks like, how many humps has it got, how wide is it, how peaked is it. So sometimes we'd like to draw a histogram, even when we have the exact data in which case we have to put it into bins. And so a thing to think about there is how many bins do we want to put it into? So here I've taken some data and I've binned it myself uh, to make some histograms. Uh, in the first picture, I've used quite a lot of bins. And so you can see the problem is that there aren't actually many uh, recordings in each bin. Right, uh, because all my bins are the same size, I could get away with plotting the frequency here. If they were different, I'd have had to have done the density. And you can see that some of these bins only have one or two people in, so I'm getting a very jaggedy histogram. On the other hand, on this picture on the right, I've only used three bins. And that seems a bit of a waste, because I've lost quite a lot of information about the data there. Uh, so this is one of these areas in which statistics is kind of more art than science. If you want to make a histogram of your data, you have to decide how many bins you want in order to represent your data well, and you might need to try different things out. So that's a few things that we can say about binned data and about the use of histograms.